all we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. On behalf of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People in Maine, welcome to our 40th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Observance. My name is Rachel Talbot Ross, and as a ninth generation Mainer of African descent and a lifelong member of the NAACP, I am proud to offer this welcome in association with Maine initiatives and numerous organizations and individuals who've come together from across the state to plan events for this observance. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929. He would have celebrated his 92nd birthday if alive this year. Tragically, his life was taken on April 4, 1968. His life's meaning and the legacy he leaves us has not just had an impact on so many Americans, but his reach was global. He was a champion of human rights. So while we take the time to recognize his life and legacy in Maine, countless others from all around the world are doing the same. Today, we have the opportunity to listen, to learn, watch and actively participate in over 20 sessions. They have been assembled not as a conference or a variety show, but strictly in remembrance and honor of this great American hero, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is my absolute honor to welcome at this time, Vice Chief Daryl Newell, of the Passamaquoddy Tribe, Tribal Council Member Kathy St. John with the Holton Band of Maliseet Indians, and Ambassador Malian Dana with the Penobscot Nation to start our day 
of recognition together. Thank you, Rachel. I am a uh, vice chief. I'm Pass McQuarty here at Indian Township. Uh, I welcome you to Indian Territory. And um, I speak my language, um, a language that has been spoken here for thousands of years. And it's, it's an honor to present that to you. And uh, it's nice to be here among good people. It's an honor to be here to celebrate the life of a great uh, spiritually gifted man, a spiritually guided man, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, in my opinion, he was sent to us to teach us, to guide us, and to lead us to a better way. And he did so by example. And he gave everything of himself for the common good and for the be betterment of all people. I remember when I was a boy, it was not yet legal for Indians to vote here in the state of Maine. My parents weren't able, weren't allowed to vote. So it is of great importance to me that we continue to our persistent efforts in um, restoring um, our tribal sovereignty that was compromised in the Maine Indian Land Claim Settlement back in 1980. Um, I have personally attributed uh, our people's uh, being able to experience and, and enjoy civil civil rights, equality, justice, and, and yes, our, our sovereignty. I, I, I directly um, attribute that to the uh, Black Civil Rights Movement and to the great warriorship of, and leadership of the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, it's an honor to be here. Willie one, thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy St. John, a member of the Holton Band of Maliseet Indians and tribal council member. I live in Holton, which is a small town located within what was uh, traditionally our ancestral Maliseet territory. It borders the Wallistic River, uh, also known as, known as the St. John River. We've been here for thousands of years as the original inhabitants and stewards of this land, honoring and replenishing it. After the arrival of the ancestors, our rights were stripped away, forcing us into the colonization system. On this Martin Luther King Day, we acknowledge the journey and work that Dr. King has accomplished and the works and the work that has to be, that has been bred from it. While our work in our respective communities is similar, we empathize and remember that there's still a lot more to be done. Thank you. Hello, I'm Molly and Dana, Penobscot Nation Tribal Ambassador, and I am so thankful to be here today to extend a, an acknowledgement of the land of my ancestors that uh, our people are still stewarding and protecting and uh, we are so blessed to be living in our sacred homeland. I also have reflected on the legacy and work of Dr. King and I too feel very thankful for all of it. I think that in this pandemic time, a lot of us are uh, feeling the trauma of generations and for indigenous people, pandemics are extra triggering because our people were knowingly infected with diseases like smallpox that our ancestors had no immunity to. The depletion of our people led to the theft of our land and resources in our homeland. At one time in Maine, there was upwards of 20 tribes and there are now five tribal communities. Although we are diminished, we stand very strong as sovereign tribal nations. Thank you all for having us here today. And thank you for the beautiful words of Vice Chief Newell and Councilwoman St. John. And on behalf of the Penobscot Nation, I say welcome and Black Lives Matter. Thank you, Vice Chief Newell, Tribal Council Member St. John and Ambassador Dana. Please join me in warmly welcoming the Reverend Jeff McGillwain from North Star African Methodist Episcopal Church 
in prayer. Greetings to Rachel Talbot Ross, the main NAACP, to Andrea Berry of Maine Initiatives, all those joining us from uh, our Native community and people from around the world as we celebrate this 40th anniversary of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and I love that it's this call to action. So as we prepare for prayer, I am just grateful for the work that's been done over the 40 years uh, in bringing people together. We gather together in prayer, though we come from many different faiths and faith practices, but this is a time where in the spirit of Dr. King, uh, we can come together. Uh, I think of this breath of life that we all have uh, and that we all share and we breathe the air and may we breathe hope and peace for the future. But let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your hand in the affairs of those on this planet. We pray for our nation, for this new administration with President-elect Biden and President-elect Vice President uh, Harris. We pray for the new administrations and those who are working in uh, our cities and our state representatives, uh, those who are trying to work together to bring people together. And we hear so much about bringing people together and about people respecting one another and coming to a new degree of somehow finding healing. And so we hear this and we truly pray that it happens. So as we gather together today and we're praying for this celebration, we pray that you would bless this celebration, the gatherings, the over 20 sessions that will happen Monday. And we pray that you will bring people together in a way they never thought before that somehow as we gather and we think about the spirit of Dr. King, that we will be brought together remembering, as he said, that darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. So my prayer for us all throughout this nation and throughout the world is that we will be filled with more light, that we will come together truly in love because this is what makes a difference in our world. We ask your blessings in the tradition of Dr. King in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This observance, traditionally featuring a gospel concert, an interfaith community dialogue, youth programs, and a dinner celebration, has been the largest celebration held in our state in Dr. King's honor. This year will not disappoint and while we can no longer come together in a ballroom, we are so incredibly pleased to spend the holiday in a virtual teaching and call to action. 75% of Americans say Martin Luther King Day is an essential holiday for advancing civil rights, according to a recent survey by reputation leaders. Most see Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy as not just a great speech, but also a continuing commitment to civil and human rights. But as you know, our work continues. A similar survey of US adults nationally found that 80% of Americans agree that civil rights are as important in 2021 as at any time in the last 50 years. And as evidence almost two weeks ago with the attack on the US Capitol by white supremacists three in 10 report that they were personally and negatively affected by discrimination in 2020. Over half of those cited race. Two thirds of American surveys said that COVID-19 pandemic has shown that America still needs to address systemic racism and specific racial disparities in our economy, education, jobs, criminal justice system, and healthcare. Toward that end, we are pleased to offer, again, more than 20 sessions, each with a call to action from incredible organizations across our state. We hope to frame the day in the words of the civil rights leader, U.S. Congressman John Lewis, by asking ourselves, if not us, then who? 
And if not now, then when? We are our heavenly Father's children. And we all know that he loves us one and all. Yet there are times when we find we answer another's voice and call. If we are willing, he will teach us his voice only to obey no matter where. And he knows. Yes, he knows just how much we can bear. Think of the times that you've asked the questions down in your heart. Now just what shall I do? Then you can find in your friends and loved ones, but they have struggles too. We have the joy of this assurance. Your heavenly Father will always answer prayer. And he knows. Yes, he knows just how much we can bear and though the load gets heavy you're never left alone to bear it all just ask for the strength and keep on toiling Though the teardrops fall, there is a God who rules earth and heaven. In him there's relief from every pain and care, and he knows, yes, he knows just how much we can bear.